Let's let uh, Paulie in San Francisco be the first to answer this question, but I want to throw it out to you as well. As far as roster reconstruction or whatever is going to happen with the Warriors um, as they put this thing together, yes, they missed the playoffs, dot, dot, dot. They were also 46 and 36. For example, one game worse than the Indiana Pacers, who are still playing. So, like, let's focus in on that. 46 and 36. When it comes to what the Warriors need to do next, means what to you? Hey, Paulie, thanks for calling Willie and Dibby. What's up? Hi, thanks for taking my call. You know, it was 46. I was going to say that. The 46 and 36 in the East is something totally different. It could have easily been easily been 50 and 32. There were at least four close games that we absolutely threw away. For roster reconstruction, I have one simple thing I'd love to see them do. Which is take, I think they paid Chris, Chris Paul 30 million. Um, Nick Claxton, who is 6'11, got 12 points and 10 boards with the, with the Nets and plays defense, is available. And I think if we could sign him with TJD, it actually gives us two real bigs to work with Draymond in a big league. And I think we got some potential with a simple move. Um, I, I, I've heard the name Nick Claxton quite a bit. Paulie, thanks so much. Not a bad idea. And it does represent how I'd sort of answer the question. And this is what I mean. I'm not going to get, like, it's still only May 21st. I don't want to get too deep into this name, that name, Clay, this, that, whatever. I mean it more conceptually. To me, 46 and 36 means this. Um, While the Warriors were not necessarily close to contention, I think it sounds amongst the fans like they were worse than they were. It sounds, when you listen to a lot of Warrior fans, like the team stunk last year. And they didn't. They didn't stink. They were 46 and 36. Is that good enough? No. Were they close? Not necessarily. But they don't stink. So when I look at this offseason, I think much more about words like tinker, twist, add, subtract, right? That's kind of the vibe I'm expecting as opposed to words like overhaul, right, rebuild, mass changes, sure. things like that. I that's I still firmly have the belief that a lot of the players on the team <laughs> can still be on the team and 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 that and that that can lead to a very very good year. So you're more of the mind that they were, you know, just a few games away from being, you know, Steph says three games away from being a six seed. Well, but but okay, but what's a six seed? So again, I'm not saying a six seed is you get a playoff series and you probably lose. And that. You probably lose. Like the Phoenix Suns with a six seed, they didn't even win a game. So I'm not here to make the case that they were close at all. Although Brandon Pajemski sure did. Yeah, I'm not here to make that case. I'm simply saying that I think the fan base sounds like the team is worse than it is. You would, you would, if you listen to a lot of Warriors fans, you would believe that they are so over the hill. They are out there with canes and 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 ace bandages um, at, at every seat, and and that the the whole league is flying by them, and that they can't compete anymore. And I'm just like. <sighs> But forty six and thirty six, sure, it's not embarrassing. But five and twenty one against the top no six teams in the West. Yeah, they're not. They were not contenders, right? But they don't stink. They're not in this like God. We got to reboot the whole thing. No, they dominated the teams who actually do stink. Correct. But the teams who were good, they dominated you. So where are we at forty six and thirty six? Because the good teams cuffed you around, and we can all nitpick. Oh, you know, the four games against Denver, they were really good games. They were in it. And, you know, Oklahoma City, you should have fouled and you didn't, and then you shouldn't have fouled and you, and you did, and Chet Holmgren got you twice, and those are two games that you could have won. And we can play that dance all you want. The bottom line is, against the good teams, you weren't very good. And so, yeah, 46 and 36, you're better than being a bad team. I agree with you, but are you really on the cusp of being – one of these really good teams that can make a threat? 888-957-9570. 46 and 36 means what to you with regard to the level of changes that need to come? Here's what 
boy, you're not going to like this example. But I, I think it's an interesting one. Do you remember off the top of your head what Minnesota's record was last year? Last year? Oh, ish. I mean, obviously. Probably 46 and 36. Okay. They're 42 and 40. Okay. They're in the play-in tournament. Okay. And, um, gosh, if I'm looking at this correctly, they uh, they came out of the play-in tournament. They did. And they went to the playoffs. And then they got flicked. And they were gone. And now they're younger, way younger. Right. And they have top-end talent in their 20s in, in, in the form of Anthony Edwards. So that's why it's not a great comp. My point is, though, is that a play-in tournament, low 40s win-type team can make tweaks and additions, tighten screws a little bit, try this. Put your focus over here. Get a little rangier, what have you, and have a very different experience the next year. And, and and that's, I guess, all I'm really getting at. I don't believe the Warriors stink as much as it sounds like to frustrated fans. And I do believe that there are tweak-type moves. And there need to be a few of them, but significant but tweak-type moves that could very, very much change their fortunes next year. Yeah, I love it. The big finish and the nod, and you believe it. Yeah, I I don't know if I believe it. Okay, and I I so look you th- at. Are you you're thinking overhaul? No, I'm okay. thinking you're gonna you're not gonna overhaul it because you have Steph, and you can't overhaul it because you have Draymond, and it feels like nobody really wants Wiggins, and if you want to get pennies on the dollar for Wiggins, you're not going to trade him. And you don't want to give up on Kaminga. So then what are we talking about in terms of an overhaul? Can you get somebody to take Chris Paul and get back $30 million worth of younger players or at least a $30 million guy who can help you? Maybe. Can Clay come back for a lot less than what you're paying him? And can he be as good as he was in the second half? Sure. That, to me, is how you would get better. You're not going to go full overhaul because you can't. I don't think that you have the ability to do a full overhaul. When I listen to you, it sounds to me like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds to me like you think there's just flat out no way that they can be a a significantly better team next year. They could be better. And, you know, if you... In a way that matters. Sure. I mean, if, if you win the games that you lost this year, if you win those games, not all of them, but if you don't play so badly in the beginning of the year and you do get a little bit incrementally better, could you be a 50-win team next year? Sure. Yeah, but what does that get you? Might get you a five seed. Okay. so And then you've at least got a chance with a veteran team, because this year you didn't have a chance. You were the 10, you needed to win twice, and then go out and beat the one. That doesn't happen. What if I asked it this way? Do you believe, without even defining it in any way, do you believe No, is the answer. Okay. The answer is no. All right. If you're going to keep Steph and Draymond and this core, I think that you're just playing out the string. Okay. You're playing for entertainment. By the way, for those who don't mind, Reed, the question was going to be, is there any path that that exists? Well, not everybody (laughs) sits with me every day. (laughs) We hope you do. Um, (laughs) Is there any path that exists where the Warriors can contend next year? Yeah, and I don't see it. Okay. I I just don't. And that's that's fine. I, I do. Yeah. I do. I think when I look at the Western Conference and I see Dallas, who is better and younger, OKC, better and younger, and only getting toward the the peak of their playing ability, Minnesota, forget about it. And I don't know if they're going to be able to keep Nas Reed or not, but with Gobert and Cat and Edwards, I thought, they Nas, did. I thought Nas might be too expensive. I, I thought, thought he was going to be... Uh, I thought Nas actually just resigned last year, no? I could be wrong. But if they keep Nas Reed, then that's even more power to them uh, as as a team uh, that is going to be tough to contend with. And, you know, Denver, they're going to be hungry again next year after getting ousted this year. That's a quick four teams that I think are better than you now and are going to be better than you no matter what next year. Nas is, uh, is under contract next year. It looks like at 13.9 player option for 25-26 and a UFA. That's unrestricted free agent right. for those who don't speak spot track. 
uh, that comes in 26-27. I would imagine yeah. that they would probably look to extend him this year or you know, trade him and get assets back for it because I don't think that Nas is going to want to... I mean, if he plays for $13 million, then he'll probably opt out. I, I mean, he's, he's better than $13 million a year. He's fantastic. Yes. I think he's one of the most fantastic... Especially so coming unique, off the bench, right? like oh my god! I think he just he affects the game. I think he's just fantastic. So I'm not discounting the Warriors' ability to get better, and also not totally discounting their ability to be in the mix. But going into next year, they're going to be the fifth best team in the West at best. Well, come September, based on what though? Again, like what I what what I always just odds what the odds makers yeah, have put it at. But I mean, like if we haven't learned over the last six years that like it changes, the the teams do not come back the same, right? I mean, Minnesota. Let's say they win the title, and then their coach next year at this time is going to be like, "Well, we played till June." So I mean, it's not like we can keep playing now. We have to leave, right? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you're right, you're right in terms of odds, although. There's a hell of a lot of deck shuffling that sounds like is about to happen here in the next two months. But not like among lot. OKC in Minnesota and Denver. Well, I don't get, think those teams will better. shuffle. They could get yeah. even better. Right, and that would be the biggest fear. Yeah. Like I, the Clippers, you could see a shuffling. The Lakers, if LeBron opts in, you still got LeBron and AD, and you know there's talk about them wanting Kyrie or whoever. They're going to well, try to add a third star. I, they want Donovan Mitchell, and the Cavs' ownership says there's no way they're going to send him to the Lakers and all of that right. stuff. The Lakers' situation doesn't worry me at all. They're not in position to do anything either, at least not in this moment. Right, but they, as it sits right now, are better than the Golden State Warriors. Um, Fine, but like, like not in any sort of a significant way. They're, right. both, they're both kind of in the same boat. And that's my point, yeah. though, is you're, neither one of you is on the come. Like Oklahoma City, even though they got knocked out, you look at their core and you're like, wow, that's a good young core who got a taste. Totally. And usually when you get a taste, you, you take the next step, and Minnesota's taken that step. Denver still has a three-time MVP and a very good team. Dallas is interesting because, you know, you wonder about what happens if they lose in this round, if Kyrie goes full Kyrie mode and... Wants to be elsewhere, but... Yeah, I doubt it. He seems like that whole thing. That's all calm down. He's playing For now, really, yeah. it's Kyrie, though. Yeah. It's yeah. Kyrie. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think the perception is, is that Kyrie has gone sideways more often than he actually has. There was a bunch of news stories that were consistent for about a year and a half when he was in Brooklyn. Right. COVID, all of that stuff. And um, other than that, the stuff about Kyrie is like he's just kind of weird. Like, you know, the, the earth is flat. Yeah. All right. S sweet. Um, whatever. Like, that's not going to kill you from, uh, from, from winning if, uh, if you're still playing well. He seems happy. Seems happy. It seems like it's working. Um, but I hear you. Yeah, this all, the, the, the deck's going to get shuffled big time. And people who we think are going to be good next year might not. And then people who we think are not going to be good might be. What, what what if Memphis is like their old selves again? They'll be year? better. You would think. And Houston's better than they were in January. You would think. I mean, yeah. they sure look like they're going um, in the right direction. Rob in San Jose on Withered and Dibs. Hey, Rob, what's up? Hey, how's it going, fellas? Uh, I kind of disagree with, with what you're saying, Mark, as far as significant tweaks. I don't think that given where Lakeup wants to be with the contracts that he's going to hand out and significant tweaks – are going to put us as contenders in that top five spot. And then I think you end up in a position like we are now where you're in no man's land. You're a seven to a 10 seed every year without breaking it all down and getting rid of things. Or even if you were able to find, quote, these significant tweaks that kind of work, I don't think that's going to put us even in that upper echelon and that top tier with these younger teams. We are an older team. We won our titles. We went to finals and lost. And the analogy that I would use to kind of describe where I think this is going is the Sharks. The Sharks had their run. They had their core. They had their great players. Now, they didn't win anything, obviously. But I think Doug Wilson held on too long instead of selling off all those assets when he could have and just broke it down and maybe acquired – some of these picks like McDavid, um, the Connor McDavid's on the Oilers and the kid that's in Colorado, where if we had just gotten rid of everybody and broken it down, then you have those younger pieces 
to keep building. And he tried to piecemeal the old and the young, and it never worked. And they were stuck in the middle until they finally decided enough's enough. So wait, so Rob, you're saying those moves won't make the the team that much better, but you don't even know what those moves might be, uh, is is my first response. And my second response is, I I also think this, everybody, and I, I think most people who follow the Warriors know this, no matter what our opinions are, they're going to continue to push and build around Steph. Like that that's that's done. They are not they are not going to break this whole thing down and overhaul it. You you know what I mean, Rob? So why not Yeah, no, I get that. So then why not make a big chess move and get rid or package Look, this is a business, right? We love Clay. Clay's been here. He's been great. We've won with him. But if you really want to do that and you really want to build around Steph, then you've got to part with a Clay and a Wiggins and a Chris Paul and package things and try to put something together to bring significant pieces here and not kind of a tweak. Well, um, no, not necessarily, because actually the package, and thanks, Rob, the package you just put together is not going to get you anything significant back. Well, if you did a sign and trade with Clay, but that's less likely than you know Clay just signing for whatever team he wants right. to go to. You just gave three names that are that are not going to get you something significant in return. You know, the the the, the significant return would come from names like uh, Kaminga, Kaminga, <laughs> Paul Jemski. Yep. I mean, yep. shoot, ink's not even dry on the interview. The picks. The picks. Yep. Even even TJD, Moody, like all, all of that, and and so I don't know. Like um, to say that the moves aren't out there without necessarily knowing what what the moves might be. Um, you know, like in the NBA, you got to be together for a second to be good. So if if your concept is keep Steph trade everyone. My, now, there's where my opinion would be, doesn't matter who you get back, that's not going to be a great basketball team. And you're not going to be able to do that because you're not going to trade Draymond. And, you know, trade everyone would mean Clay and a sign and trade, not likely. Somebody takes Chris Paul's $30 million, maybe a little bit more likely, but still unlikely. And then you're going to be trading your young assets that I think that you'd want to hold on to for the post-Steph era. Um, exactly right. So... I yeah, that's just the, that's where I sit on this is I partially this is about the fact that I feel the fan base and many around uh the NBA and looking at the Golden State Warriors are are stating and and if your statement is hey man the dynasty's over. Well okay, that's obviously not a crazy statement. They're very much getting up there in in age. But it the, the narrative does not sound like a forty six and thirty six basketball team, right? And and so you don't know what those, as I would call them, significant but tweaks, not overhaul type moves, but just a little addition here, a little subtraction there, sort of a change in the way that you approach offense and defense. Man, two three players who are even just rotational players can make a huge difference in in who you are. A, a couple of them were on this radio station earlier today. Yeah. The Sean Livingstons of the world, the Otto Porters of the world, those can make a massive difference in your basketball team. If you're a winning team already. Yeah, even though they're not core players. Right. If you I mean and I don't think that they're in a spot now where they're just a Sean Livingston and an Otto Porter away from being a championship team again. I think you need to bring in like a Brandon Ingram or somebody who's a real 1A or a 1B, somebody who can make a big impact up front as opposed to a couple of role guys.